Let us now continue with our playlist JavaScript Essentials Required for React. And this is one of the topics you should understand before understanding promises, before understanding async await, understanding client server architecture is important. And also, this question will be asked in interviews. So, if you want to deeply understand about this client server architecture, then you have to watch this complete video. Only then you will understand how this architecture will be working. This is the simple representation we are having client. In a browser, we will be searching for some data. So, basically, what we are doing, we are just sending request to the server. So, here what we are doing, we are requesting data from our web server. Inside the server, entire data will be stored and in return we will be getting response this is the basic overview we all know but behind this what happens how it will be searching how the current ip address will be searched entire thing we are going to learn in this lecture requesting data and in return getting response it is nothing but client server architecture it is also called as request response model. And one thing you should remember, this is not only requesting some data. This process will be repeating if you are requesting complete website, if you are requesting image, whatever you are requesting, this entire process will be repeating. Now let us understand what happens when we access a web server. So this is the representation we have seen. We are requesting data. And in return, we are getting response. Now imagine I have just typed this URL and I just want to get the data which is present inside this URL. So what I will do, I will be requesting web server and in return, I will be getting response. But in backend, there are many steps involved before getting response from the server. Now in this URL, we are having three things. This HTTP. It can also be HTTPS. This is nothing but protocol, which is having some set of rules. And this cat hyphen fat dot hero, this entire thing till dot com. It is nothing but a domain name. And this is not the real name of the website which we are requesting. This is the domain name. And this domain name is given so that people can memorize. And for this domain name, IP will be assigned and then facts this one of the slash I am having fact this is nothing but resource I just want to find or I just want to request these facts from my server so this is the first step what I have done I have just typed this URL in my client that is in my browser and in this URL I am having three parts we are having protocol we have domain name and we have resource. If we do not give this resource, then it simply means we are trying to access entire website. Now behind the scene, what happens? Whatever domain name we have given, it is just going to convert into real IP address. That IP address we will be getting from our DNS. DNS stands for domain name server. And here what we are doing, we are doing DNS lookup so that whatever domain name we are having here, that will be converted into real IP address. So here domain name servers will be like phone book of the internet using which we just have to type the name. In return, we will be getting IP of that name. So in your phone also, how you will be saving? You will not save only the number. Along with number, you will be saving the name of the person. Similarly, for this domain name, we will be having this IP address. So from DNS server, we can get that IP address. And this happens by ISP, that is that internet service provider. They will be accessing entire thing. But only thing you have to remember, whatever domain name we are giving, that will be converted into real IP address. And here, you do not have to worry about this port number. This is the IP address for this domain name. 
and this quote is nothing but whatever services we are getting from our server so as of now you do not have to worry what is this port number so here also we are having three parts we are having protocol we are having real ip address and we have this port number by default we will be having 443 for https and if you are using http protocol then you will be having 80 port number so these are the default port numbers for these protocols but here whatever resources we have given inside this whenever we are searching that is not passed only this domain name ip address is given from this domain name server i will be showing you how we are going to get this resource page so this is a first step what we have done we are just requesting the data so in that case we are just converting the domain name to real ip address once it is done what happens tcp ip socket connection is established between client and server so that they can be connected and tcp stands for transmission control protocol and ip stands for internet protocol and these both protocols are communication protocol that defines how data has to be traveled across the web and also these protocols are used to set the rules how data will be moving across the internet so once it is done once our connection is established finally we will be making request to the server and that request is nothing but http request and here http stands for hypertext transfer protocol so like how tcp is communication protocol similarly http is also communication protocol using which we can define some set of rules so that our client and server can communicate and how this is going to work by sending request and responses from client to server and back now this is the request message which will be looking like this we are having get i'm just getting some data from web server so here i am having get and this is where we will be having our resources this one fax it will be given here what page i want to access and then here i will be having this http slash one dot one and this is nothing but http method and this is nothing but a request target what page i have to access and this is nothing but a http version and this line is very important it is also called as start line we are having multiple http method but as of now we are getting data so that is the reason we are having get if you are sending data then we are having post method for that this is how our request will be looking inside which we will be having request header inside this we will be having multiple information regarding host we will have information regarding language we will have information regarding user agent what browser we are using what version it is having and finally we are having this request body inside this body we will be having the data which is sent from the client to server you can take an example of form from form if you are sending some data to server that data will be stored inside this body and here if you are not having any resources if you are only having slash that means you are trying to access entire website that is entire web page but here i have given slash facts which means i just want to access this page so whenever http request is sent inside that we will be having this resources now finally our request is ready what happens once the request is sent to server now server is ready to send back the response so in return what we get we get http response and this is what our response look like inside which we are having http version but in place of http method and resource target we are having status code and status message so status code 200 means successfully we are able to access and we are able to get the data 
and okay means everything is fine we do not have any error similarly we are having 404 errors 405 500 errors so accordingly status message will be displayed so we already know 404 means page not found so when server is sending the response that status code and that status message will be displayed here also we will be having http request headers and here we will be having request body when we send http request inside the request body whatever data we were sending from form that data will be given inside this body but while doing http response or while getting http response inside this body whatever data we are trying to fetch from the api mostly that data will be in json format so that data will be given inside this body but now in this entire example what we did we have just tried to access this url and inside that we are just accessing this facts resources but in reality what happens if we are having multiple files and folders initially we are just going to get html file but this entire request response model will be repeated for all the files present inside the website it is going to scan for css files js files images files folders whatever we are having entire thing will be scanned and for each and everything this entire process will be repeated http request http response socket connection entire thing will be repeated so you should remember this for each and every file there will be new http request made to the server okay it is not going to convert so once we write this it will not give the response in one go for each and every file this entire process will be repeated but there can be multiple requests and responses happening at the same time so due to which sometimes connection will go slow or we will get the response little bit late but this is the entire process which will be repeated for each and every file present in our website so let us now understand how this request and response data is actually sent across the web so inside this web server whatever request we are making it will be breaking into small chunks and these are called as packets so this is nothing but a request which are divided into small chunks and these are called as packets and once these packets reach to their final destination what tcp will be doing tcp will reassemble all the packets into the original request which we have made and what happens while sending this request to the client and in return from web server we will be getting response so whatever chunks we are having whatever packets we are having in return this has to be sent to the client so what happens they will be traveling like this in different routes they will be traveling so that we can get the message or we can get the data very fast and on each and every packet we will be having the ip address so that they will be arriving to the correct destination and the data will be displayed to the browser okay this packets and chunks this is regarding tcp ip socket connection but whatever we have seen till now until we get response this is the entire process which will be repeated for each and every file whenever we are trying to access data from web server and this is how tcp ip will be working using which request will be divided into small chunks and they will be traveling into different routes so that message can be reached faster to the client so this is the broad overview how this client server architecture will be working if you are having any doubts you can comment down your doubts so that i can help you and i can simplify this process once you understand this process then when you are learning promises async await if you are trying to fetch some data from server then this concept will be very helpful and also you will be having some idea how this architecture will be working and how we are getting data and how that data is displayed to client that's all for this lecture
थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग